Dying, Christ destroyed our death. Rising, Christ restored our life. Christ will come again in glory. As in baptism, Freda Elizabeth Clark put on Christ. So now in Christ, may Freda be clothed with glory. Here now, dear friends, we are God's children. What we shall be has not yet been revealed. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Those who have this hope purify themselves as Christ is pure. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and I am life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, yet shall they live. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. I died and behold, I am alive forevermore, and I hold the keys of hell and death. Because I live, you shall live also. Friends, we gather together this morning to praise God and to witness to our faith as we celebrate the life of Freda. We come together in grief, acknowledging our human loss. May God grant us all grace that in pain we might find comfort, in sorrow, hope, in death, resurrection. Will you stand as you are able for hymn number 140?
seated. Let's join our hearts together in prayer. For eternal and gracious God, you who in your great faithfulness are with us in these moments, you who are with us to be our comfort, to be our peace, to be our hope, to be our strength in our times of sorrow and grieving and loss. O oh, gracious God, for the faithfulness with which you hold us, for the love with which you lift us, and for the grace that flows so freely in this time, we give you our thanks, our praise. We open up our hearts to receive the ministry of your Spirit, even as we remember our sister and your saint, Freda. Gracious God, we know that as we gather in the light of your promises, that she knows the fulfillment of those promises by the power of your resurrection. And so we ask that it might be in that light of resurrection in which she stands fully now in the shining of your grace, that we trust her to you and we trust ourselves to how you would be with us, how you would guide us as our good shepherd, how you would lead us into your light of life, and how you would fill us with the fullness of your love. Lord, we seek these blessings, even as we gather in the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. For it's in his name we give you thanks for Freda, for her victory in Christ, and for the ways that that same victory would be before us as our hope in this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The scriptures always hold for us the truth of God, a truth that we trust, a truth that leads us into the depth of God's love for us in every moment of life, and particularly for these moments, when we need to know that love in ways that would, would indeed be the grace we need, the comfort we need. And so I'd invite you to receive uh, the reading of the text today in that spirit, ways that would be open, you would be open to how the spirit would speak to you. And I want to invite you, even as we would join in the 23rd Psalm, it's in your bulletin this morning, and so I'm going to invite us to, uh, to read together. Uh, you know that Freda was a student of the scriptures and loved the scriptures. This was one of her uh, favorites, and so let us uh, be together in this good word. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Hear now the word of the revelation. I saw a new heaven and a new earth. The first heaven and the first earth, they had passed away. They had passed away. And the sea was no more. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, 
coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling of God is among mortals, and God will dwell with them as their God, and they will be God's people, and God will be with them. God will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death, death will be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore. For these are the first things. These are the former things. These are the things that have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. Make all things new. He said, Write this. These words are trustworthy, they are true. And then he said to me, it is done. I'm the Alpha, I'm the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I give water without price, a gift from the fountain of the water of life. And those who conquer shall have this as their heritage. I will be their God, and they will be my children. The Gospel reading. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. There are many mansions. If it were not so, would I have told you, I go and I prepare a place for you. And if I go and I prepare a place for you, I will come again. I will take you to myself so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I'm going. I won't leave you alone. I won't leave you orphaned. I'm coming to you. In a little while, the world will see me no longer, but you will see me. And because I live, you will live also. I've said these things to you while I'm still with you. The Advocate the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name. The Spirit will teach you everything and remind you of everything that I have spoken to you. Peace. Peace I leave with you. My peace is the peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Friends, this is the word of God for all of us as the people of God. Thanks be to God. Hymn of Promise, number 707, will you please stand? There's a 
the dawn in every darkness, bringing hope to you and me. From the past will come the future, what it holds a mystery, unrevealed until it sees and something God alone can see. We gather as a people of faith today, we gather as friends, we gather as family, we gather as the Church of Jesus Christ, we gather as those who give thanks uh, for a saint. A saint is a person who lives out God's love in the life of the world, and uh, Freda did that. And when people do that, they bring a blessing to you. And. Uh, Part of what happens when we come into these times is we remember those because that's what makes life worth living <laughs> is the blessings, you know, is the way that we share love together, the way that we share life together, the way that in the, in the small ways and in the big ways, uh, the ways that we know how Christ was, was so present in time spent together. I, and so, you know, when we're here, we're going to have some time to remember. And that's always uh, what we do when we come into these moments. We remember. Because uh, grieving is a healing journey of remembrance. And so this is a step along the way. Uh, and in a few moments, we're going to have an opportunity to hear from Lou Wilkin uh, via a, a testimony that she sent uh, that I'll share. Uh, we're going to hear from Nancy DeCourcy and from Pat Chrisley. And we're grateful for the words that y'all will bring this morning and the memories that y'all will share and uh, for the ways that as they share, a part of what happens is w it just kind of triggers, uh, you know, our own memories. And uh, you know the spiel, because uh, you've heard it from me before, <laughs> that when, when we come into moments like these and you have those memories, uh, it's great to have them because uh, Fred and, Freda and you uh, shared them together and God kind of gave them to you. It's even better uh, to write them down and then to uh, send that to Sharon so that she can treasure those also because that's part of what happens when, uh, when we minister to each other. You know, we share that. I call it the second blessing. You know, you get the blessing and then you share it as the second blessing. And, uh, that's something that, that's a way that you can be in ministry, something you can do uh, coming out of this morning. Uh, that would really be uh, a gift. So I want to thank you for that. Uh, and so it's in that uh, spirit that I'm going to invite uh, Pat and Nancy to come forward this morning and um, share with us. And to just, y'all come on up together and I'll share from Luke. And again, these words from uh, Lou Wilkin. Uh, Y'all may know Bill and Lou were just uh, some of Freda and Sharon's best buddies. <laughs> and so it's so great to, to receive a word from her. I first met Freda in Dallas in 1995. She was teaching a disciple Bible class here at Spring Valley at the church. Some years later, we were together in a Bible study in my home. And following that, Bill and I had Freda to our home for dinner a couple of times a month for years. Then in 2017, Bill and I both retired and we moved to Nashville to be closer to our families. Uh, I was sad to move away from my friend Freda, 
but I kept in touch with calls and with notes. And in the six years that followed, the years that we've lived in Nashville, Bill and I have made two trips to Dallas to see Freda. She was a good friend. Over the years of my knowing Freda, I've always found her to be a humble disciple of Jesus Christ. She never insisted that I accept her understandings of the scriptures, nor did she push advice on me when my problems loomed so large. She knew her Bible and was joyful and was confident that her God neither slumbered nor slept. As it says in Psalm 121, 3 and 4, she believed that God was there for her when all was well and when she struggled with the tough situations as when a next-door neighbor's fire destroyed her home. I know the Spring Valley United Methodist Church was her life, and so she missed seeing her friends and being in worship when she couldn't attend. And I know in the end, when she was bedridden, she sang songs, hymns, spiritual praise to her God to keep her faith strong. Freda cared about her daughter, Sharon, and it was a blessing when Sharon came to Dallas to live with Freda. It was not easy for two independent women used to living on their own to share one condo, but they made it work. Sharon's living with Freda enabled Freda to remain at home and not in a facility where others would care for her. It was Freda's wish to be in her home and to be with people she cared about when she died. And that's just what happened. Psalm 116, 15 says, Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. And this saint was precious to me. And she will be missed. With all love, Lou Wilkins. If I may, I would like to recognize Freda's Emmaus sisters who are here and I heard about for so many years. They loved her so long and so strong. Betty, Sisty, and Marilyn, would you all please stand up? I really think people would like to see who you are. Do you mind? <laughs> I just, because all of Freda's friends heard of her Emmaus sisters. Thank you so much. You can sit down now. I just was so thrilled. I had met them all except for Sisty. So anyway, thank you so much for coming. I remember that first and foremost, Freda was a Christian who truly and always loved the Lord. This never wavered through good times and hard times, and she loved this church so much. You here at Spring Valley may remember her sitting in the church office on Sunday mornings, answering the phone, greeting visitors, hugging children who came to say hello to her each week, always a welcoming presence. You may remember her ushering, sewing chrismons for the Christmas tree, teaching disciple Bible study classes. I remember her as a friend, although a few years of age in difference. We met on a Spring Valley church tour to Big Bend. Later deciding to drive Meals on Wheels together, she, with MAPSCO in hand, my navigator. We had lots of shared experiences. At the Dallas Museum of Art, she marveled at the Reeves exhibit, having lived through those World War II years. At the Arboretum, she basked in the sights and smells of Dallas blooms, so appreciative of God's beauty. Her enjoyment of things always enhanced mine. And Freda loved sports. During her early years, she excelled at golf, got a hole in one once, was on a bowling league, and owned horses. And as everyone knows, she was a true Blue Rangers fan. <laughs> she also liked all kinds of card and board games, beating my husband George and me at any game we played her. And as George commented after each encounter, she is sharp as a tack. I mean, she won most of the time. <laughs> Even when she was bedbound at the end, we played a card game called golf, which seemed to give her no end of pleasure. All through the 25 years I knew her, Freda never asked me of, for anything, only expressing her unconditional love and appreciation 
whenever I happened to visit. If I asked for her advice, her answer came from years of experience and wisdom from above. I will always remember Freda. I'm so thankful she was part of my life. I miss her. I was very honored when Sharon called me to, to speak at this memorial for Freda. I had the opportunity to share many things with Freda during our time together. Our friendship grew deeper during the COVID lockdown and after the fire that took Freda's and Sharon's home. While confined in their hotel room, I would call Freda every Tuesday to see how she was doing and share the great nothingness that I was doing. What can you talk about on the phone for 45 minutes when you can't get out and mingle with people or do anything worth talking about? To this day, I don't know what we talked about during those phone calls, but we talked and listened to each other, and she acted like she enjoyed the conversation. Finally, the COVID restrictions were easing, and I was able to go see her in person. When I walked into her rehab room for the first time, she burst into tears and laughter at the same time. Thus began my every Wednesday visits. Every time I went to see her, she would light up like a Christmas tree. And I'm sure she did that very same thing to everyone else that went to see her. I chose Wednesdays because the Bible study group was able to begin meeting again, and I would have something to talk about. She looked forward to those Wednesday visits. She wanted to know everything about the Bible study. What were we studying? What insight did we uncover? What did we talk about? And then she would share her thoughts in response. In case you haven't picked up on it, she loved Bible study, and she missed coming to the group. Even though she was unable to come, it was important for her to know that we were studying and growing in our faith in Jesus Christ. While the group was meeting on those Wednesday mornings, she was praying for us. She wanted everyone in that group to be blessed by the Lord and to know she loved them. I said that Freda loved studying the Bible. She also loved opening the scriptures up to others. It was when she led the disciple Bible study that I first got to know her. That was my first serious venture into Bible study, and she was our leader. It was Freda that awoke my love of study and eventually taking the plunge to facilitate studies myself. She was my mentor. It was her inspiration that made me want to study and do the best job I could when leading small groups. I wanted her to be proud of me. I never wanted to shame her. As well as being my mentor, she was like a second mother to me. She gave me the opportunity to share the last years of her life on this earth. You see, my mother lived in Chattanooga and I had a full-time job during her last years. I was not able to go see her every week to see how she was doing or hear her stories. But Freda gave me that opportunity. I felt that I was able to honor my mother by honoring Freda. As well as Freda being a mentor, she was above all else a mother. And Sharon, she loved you so much. If you ever wondered whether we were talking about you behind your back during our visits, well, she did share a few things. Several times she shared how she and Dale wanted children but could not have them. She told me about when you and your brother were brought to her and you being handed into her arms. She said that you turned to her and said, Mama, her dream of being a mother was fulfilled and she was made whole. She held in her heart the memories of the things you did while growing up, things that a mother remembers 
but you probably never gave a second thought. For example, one day she told me a, about being out in the front yard with you and your brother. You were probably three or four. Her attention was throwing a ball to him and her back was to you. Well, you did what all little girls do when not being watched. You went into the house and into her dresser and pulled out her gloves for dress up. When you came back outside, you were wearing her gloves and began to clap your hands and the fingers of the gloves were flopping back and forth and you were so proud of yourself. Telling that story, she threw her head back and laughed and laughed just as if it had happened yesterday. She was so proud of your achievements in school and your being bold enough to move to Atlanta. I will miss Freda and our visits together, but my life is far better because I knew her. Thank you, Sharon, for allowing me to remember her with you. Uh, Nancy, thank you so much. And uh, again, what a blessing. And I invite you to share the blessings that you have with Sharon also this, in, the, in these days. Word from 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 through 9. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By God's great mercy, the Lord has given us new birth to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead into an inheritance imperishable and undefiled, unfading, kept in heaven for you. You who are being kept, being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now, for a little while, you've had to suffer various trials so that the genuineness of your faith being more precious than gold, that, though perishable, is tested by fire, that faith may be found to result in the praise and the glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy, for you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The word of God for all of us, that the children of God, let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for how as a people of faith, your promises are to us. They are your power in our lives. And we receive them in and through faith that we may know how grace would come and would bless. And so we ask that that very grace come and bless us even now, even as Freda blessed us throughout every day of her life. And this goodness in your glory. We give you our thanks and praise as we lift up this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. I remember one of the first times that I met Freda, Sharon, and I were in the office, and I don't know if it was her birthday or something. You suggested to me that I might go uh, visit your mom. So I said, that's a good idea. So uh, I went over and uh, had a chance to sit down with Freda. And I remember, uh, you know, my first impression, uh, here was a petite uh, little white-haired lady with uh, bright eyes and a big smile. And, uh, you know, kind of at the beginning, judged her by her age and her stature. And I thought, well, she's just kind of a little frail and fragile and wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Those of you who knew Freda, uh, frail and fragile was not quite the adjectives that would uh, speak about uh, who she was because uh, Freda was tough. <laughs> and she was strong. She was strong in spirit. Verse 5 said that uh, the saints are kept by the power of God through their faith. That's the strength that Fred had. 
that God had kept her in God's power through her faith in God in ways that she lived that faith with us in ways that her life shone with a living hope, with a risen presence for Jesus Christ, alive and vibrant in and through her. Fred witnessed this gift of faith to us all, this life of faith to us all, and how she served at Spring Valley, how she studied and loved God's word, how she practiced the ministry of prayer, and how she just delighted and was sustained by the sacraments. You know, we've heard really good words this morning. Again, Pat and Nancy, thank you uh, for the ways that Freda shared uh, Christ's love through her service here at Spring Valley. And uh, it was lifted up about the welcome desk. Uh, and those of you who, you know, we're all church folks, we all know about the welcome desk. You know, it's part of what, what churches do. Uh, people walk in the front door, and the welcome desk is there for information, for guidance, for direction. Uh, but that's only about a quarter of what the welcome desk does. What the welcome desk does is it sets the tone. It shows people the heart of the church. It allows people to experience hospitality. It welcomes people in. It lets people know that this family, this church family, is a good place to be and good people to be with. And when Freda manned that or staffed that desk, you know, on Sunday mornings and throughout the week, she brought that blessing, opening up the heart of this church which has a beautiful heart, but you always need a person, kind of a front person there, you know, somebody at the welcome desk to, to kind of open the door a little bit. And she provided that gift. And when you do that, people can kind of enter in. That's good. We're grateful for that grace. We're grateful for her love of God's Word. And uh, Pat, you spoke so eloquently about that, how she was a diligent student of the Bible. I can always remember visiting her. She would have the Bible by her chair. I want to share with you, when the preacher goes in, if the Bible's by your chair, extra brownie points. Just want to let you know. That's that. When the preacher comes, if you're going to make a visit, the preacher's coming to visit, put the Bible by your chair. Uh, that says, <laughs> my friend had the Bible by her chair. You know, and she always had the study book there, too. She'd always want to talk about what she was learning or, you know, ask me what, what y'all were doing, Pat, or, you know, so, you know, she always wanted to know what was going on, not only in the church, but she wanted to know what was going on in the Word as it was being studied in the life of the church. And, um, you know, Again, you're around people like that. It's just like you said, Pat. They are an inspiration. Their enthusiasm is contagious. It just inspires you to and encourages you to be in the Word yourself so that that same life-sustaining, uh, the Bible talks about the Word of God as the milk, uh, the, you know, uh, the sweet milk of the soul, you know? Uh, that, that sweet milk would nourish our souls in ways that we too would know the power of that Word in our lives. And Freda brought that witness to us. I'm thankful for that. She had a heart for outreach. She loved the difference that the church made in the life of the world as the church reached out. And she was particularly uh, enthusiastic and supportive of Saluda Paz and the mission to Guatemala. And she didn't ever make that mission trip, but she just delighted to hear about the stories and about how Spring Valley would go and would share Christ's love in that place where it made such a difference in the lives of children. And she delighted in that. She practiced prayer. You always want to have a prayer warrior in the corner. I just want to let y'all know that. Y'all already knew know that. But when somebody says, I'm praying for you, I always say, amen. <laughs> Thank you very much. And Freda said that, I think, to just about everybody she met. <laughs> I mean, that was kind of one of her blessings. And you know what? I, I believe her. And it wasn't just idle words for her. For her, part of what she did, you know, she may have been home, but that didn't stop her from being in ministry. <laughs> she was there praying for people. And I was always grateful when she said, you know, as my preacher, I'm, I'm praying for you. 
Preachers always are grateful, aren't we, when somebody's praying for us? We, we need all the prayers we can get. And uh, when she would share that blessing, you know, that was, that was a gift. And she shared that gift. I wasn't the only one on her prayer list. Frank, you weren't the only one on her prayer list. Y'all were on her prayer list. You know, she prayed for Saul. I love having a prayer warrior in her corner. And she was sustained by the sacrament. One of the tender moments that I shared in with Freda, and I know that other people have shared in with Freda as well, is, is uh, sharing in home communion. And when you go into somebody's home, and you, and you break the bread, and you drink the cup, and you say, this is the body, this is the blood, and you're in that sense of presence that only the sacrament holds. I want to tell you, those are tender moments. She loved those moments. So every time I think about communion, part of what I do is I think about the way that she shared that love of the sacrament. She had such a rich and vibrant faith. You know, when you look at Freda's life, she might not have had a whole lot in terms of what the world, uh, by the world's measure, uh, would think of as a whole lot. But Freda was rich. She was rich with an eternal treasure, with the things of God. And I'm grateful for the ways that she had that heart, for the ways that she lived that life with us, and for the ways that she passed that on to you, Sharon, as part of her legacy. Because when you talk about inheritance, inheritance of a living and vibrant faith, which you have, is a gift that comes from somebody else living it with you and giving it to you. I think about 2 Timothy where Paul talks about the faith that I first thought of. So in grandma and then so in mom, I see in you. For this faith, I see in you. So we're grateful, I'm grateful, for the ways that she shared that inheritance, that richness with you. And I know, and it's been attested to already, that sometimes in her strength, uh, Freda could be just a little bit stubborn. Not, not a lot, just, just a little. Uh, and uh, her heart, um, even in that stubbornness, her heart was always there for you, Sharon, and for your best. And you returned that blessing. You did. By how you cared for your mom in these past years. You gave her a gift, a huge gift. Because above all, she wanted to be at home. And she wanted to be with the people that she loved right around her. You made that possible. So thank you for giving her that gift. That really meant so much to her. The scripture talks about faith being tested by fire. As we all know, that's literally true in Freda's case. For she and Sharon experienced the devastation of fire and prolonged hospitalization, and yet it was her faith that brought her through. It was the genuineness of her faith that shone in those moments, those tough times, and all the tough times, as well as the good times of her life. And what the scripture this morning witnesses, and what we rejoice in for Freda and for ourselves, is that even as God births in us a living hope and sustains in us a strengthening faith that the journey of faith it leads on to an end it leads on to a destination a destination which is need is the salvation of our souls and we believe and we know that Freda has entered into that blessing in all fullness, where she can join with all of the saints in the joy inexpressible in that full glory of God. And so we trust her now to God's great care, embraced by God's full love, lifted into the full light of the resurrection, into the inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, unfading, heaven heaven that's there for her. 
Heaven was always Freda's hope. I used to go, and when I was visit with Freda, we'd sit in the front room. And when we sat in that front room, her chair would be there, and she would, um, from that vantage point, she could look out the window. <laughs> And she could keep an eye on what was going on in the world, you know, what was happening on her street. She could see beyond, beyond where she sat, out into what was happening. And in or through her faith, she was always looking out. She was always looking forward. She was always looking to that glass darkly. See that mirror dimly. But friends, what the scriptures say is that when we pass through death, then we shall see face to face. Now we know in part, then we shall know fully, even as we are fully understood. Faith, hope, and love abide. Those three, the greatest gift, the gift of love. She had that love for us, and she shared that gift of love with us. And what she looked toward, she has entered into. One last word on her passing, on her crossing. In the end, Sharon and Freda's good friends, Lou and Bill, were able to be with Freda. I want to tell you, you know, who wouldn't want that? And they were reading scripture, the words of faith that Freda loved, and they were singing hymns, the songs of faith. And that is what surrounded her as she breathed her last breath and as she passed from this world into the next, where she took her first breath. What I believe is a first first breath and the full praise of the angels. Because I like to say, think about what happens in heaven is that we're singing in heaven. That's what the scriptures talk about. We're going to praise God in heaven, you know, and uh, we're singing. And I just like to think of Freddie just kind of being surrounded by song here, kind of crossing over into song there. And as the crossing over, singing one of Freddie's favorite songs that we're going to sing when we close up the service this morning. And the stanza of the song goes like this. Jesus. 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 The sweetest name I know fills my every longing. Keeps me singing as I go. As I go from this world. As I go to the next keeps me singing, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. That was Freda's faith. May it be our faith as well. As we bow our heads and as we join in prayer, dear, good, and gracious God, for the ways that Freda has been your saint, brought your blessing, lived a life that followed you. We give you our thanks and praise for this witness, for its walk, for the ways that Freda encouraged us in our witness and in our walk, for the ways that we too can be people with an open heart for all who would enter through these doors, who would come into the life of your church, for the ways that we too can be lovers of your word, for the ways that we too can delight in the difference your word makes in the world, for the ways that we too can be people of prayer, for the ways that we too can cherish the tender moments of the sacrament, the gifts of faith. Gracious God, thank you for the blessings that she brought. We trust her now to the fullness of your care as she dwells with you in the powers of your promise realized in the resurrection, that full and inexpressible gift of glory. And Lord, we too trust ourselves to how you lead us forward from these moments, how you would be our guide and our good shepherd, even through the valley of the shadow, 
you are with us. And so we join together in praying the prayer that you taught us, the prayer of faith, as we say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let's enjoy singing one of her favorite songs. I've got to mention this. Um, There's Within My Heart a Melody is a wonderful title for the song. But I bet you Freda learned it from the Cokesbury where the title is, He Keeps Me Singing, which are the last words in the hymn, He Keeps Me Singing. Let's stand and enjoy singing, He Keeps Me Singing. Within my heart a melody, Jesus whispers sweet and low. Fear not, I am with thee, peace be still, in all of life self and flow. Jesus, 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 sweet as name I know. singing as I go. Though sometimes he leads through waters deep, trials fall across the way. Though sometimes the path seems rough and steep, see his footprints all the way. Jesus, 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 his name I know fills my every longing keeps me singing as I go singing as I go soon he's coming back to welcome me far beyond the starry sky I shall wing my flight to worlds unknown I shall reign with him on high. Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know. Fills my every longing, keeps me singing as I go, singing as I go. Amen. You may be seated. Max, thank you. <laughs> Fred would be proud of that. <laughs> Spirited. Good. <laughs> oh, my friends, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance to love in all its fullness. And may it bless you now and always. Go from this time and this place in God's peace. And may that grace that is yours in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit be the grace that you live and share with everyone. In Jesus our Lord.